It's important to realise, of course, that most of the uh, determinants of health are not healthcare related. So there are things like education, employment, housing, clean water, sanitation, the various things we call social determinants of health. And that's essentially what we think of in terms of the indirect impacts. It's things that are going to impact on all these other aspects uh, of the life of these people other than the disease itself and the health care related to it. What's important is that most of these things will have a, a far larger impact uh, on the eventual health of the population than the direct impact of this particular outbreak. So previous work that we've done, for example, with SARS, with pandemic influenza, foot and mouth disease, all sorts of outbreaks that have happened, um, there's a very specific direct impact of the disease itself. This is usually related to the mortality, the morbidity and the healthcare costs. But then these longer term effects, the wider effects that last much longer, become much more important, not just for the economy, but also eventually for health. Because of course, health is intrinsically linked with the economy. Good health requires a good economy. But these indirect effects, these wider effects on the economy can be very uh, significant. So our work on SARS, for example, showed that the losses there to areas like tourism, uh, leisure industry, food, travel. They total some nine billion uh, dollars in China, uh, one and a half billion in Hong Kong, which was clearly very uh, severely affected. But what's interesting is it also um, led to losses of around five billion in Canada. And of course, Canada really didn't have very much in terms of impact of SARS, although it was subject to a WHO travel advisory. Our other work on um, potential impact of pandemic influenza to the United Kingdom, for example, a developed economy at this point, um, the range there was between um, half a percent of gross domestic product for a, a, a mild outbreak to nine and a half percent for an extreme SARS-like outbreak. What's important about these impacts on gross domestic product is that is effectively your national wealth or your national income. So if that uh, declines by those sorts of magnitudes, and to put that in context, in the UK, the impact of the financial crisis was 2.5%. So if we had something that was 8 9%, like a severe case of pandemic influenza could be, that could be absolutely catastrophic on the economy of a very resilient country like the UK. Work we did elsewhere on places like Thailand, South Africa, Uganda, showed that you'd have a much more disproportionate impact on those economies because they're not quite so resilient and able to withstand the impacts of such outbreaks. Recent reports from West Africa, the World Bank has forecast that the economic losses due to Ebola will be somewhere between four and thirty billion dollars. That's around a half to three percent of that region's um, uh, gross domestic product or their, their national income. Um, the bank have also indicated that about half of the working population of Liberia, for example, uh, is no longer working since this crisis uh, began. So clearly the extent of the impact will depend on how wide the disease spreads, on how long it lasts, but these levels indicate there's going to be significant impact on economic growth. That's really important because development of these economies is dependent on the growth of their economies, of course, by definition. They need their gross domestic product, their national income, to increase year on year, not just to be able to afford education, employment, housing, the things um, that have already been mentioned, but also, of course, to invest in health care, which we know has been um, critically wanting um, during this particular outbreak itself. So in those parts of West Africa that are affected um, by Ebola, uh, we've seen a number of things happen already. We've seen a number of big mining firms, for example, um, shutting down their operations or evacuating their foreign staff, um, certainly. We have organisations uh, like China Union, uh, which began shipping iron ore out of Liberia earlier this year, scaling down its activities, threatening to shut down um, completely. We have investors who are reducing investment in many of these companies, so share prices have started to fall. Uh, again, significant impacts on these particular sectors of the economy. And, and that's the sad thing about Sierra Leone, because we were all, you know, kind of just getting quite excited that all of this new business was coming in. And it, it, it was, you know, quite exciting and it was a good place to, 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 to live. But now, how long will it take for all of those businesses? I mean, I'm here now, but I know that a lot of people who have their 
ability to move out. This, this looks like the war. So a lot of people who had the ability to move out have. And all of that talent and expertise, you know, all of the people who had moved back from the diaspora are just out of there, out of Sierra Leone again. And it's going to take that, t you know, time for them to come back. And, and that's a real shame. Well, so if we look at the war that was from 91 to 2002, it's kind of taken like a decade to get to where Sierra Leone was, which was, I was saying was a kind of good place um, for, uh, for further development. Um, I hope it doesn't take as long. I hope that we, you know, we can focus on the things like building the health system, like the education system, and that we can find ways to accelerate that, um, those changes, because if we go at the same pace, um, it won't take long for something else like this to happen again. In Liberia, we haven't gotten over the war. We're, s we're still recovering from the war, and now we have a different war. It's, it's, it's more of a biological, you know, war, but it's another war. So families have been destroyed. There's no, it, it's not, it's not going to take a, a short amount of time for, for, for Liberia to be repaired from the grassroots level all the way up to the institutional level. It's, um, it's going to take at least two decades because is it, the war ended 13, 13 years ago. We've had 13 years of peace, but when you go to Liberia, you can still see damages of the war. Though there hasn't been fighting in 13 years and families have still been torn because of that. So now that you have Ebola, not much, not much fixing will be done within a short amount of time. Even if the disease gets eradicated, it, it'll still take a long time.